abandon the view that uh, God is a single one dege dege person and that person is Jesus Christ. So contrary to the view of the Jewish witnesses who say that he is not God at all, the oneness Pentecostals say that Jesus is all that there is of God. Dr. Bernard. Yes, thank you. Yeah, we do emphasize the oneness of God and I will say that obviously we don't see ourselves as a cult. We ask to be judged according to the teaching of Scripture. And by the way, many evangelical scholars and Pentecostal scholars that I've interacted with, they now agree, while they may not agree with my mm -hmm. teaching, they agree that we're not a cult, but we mm -hmm. should be judged as people who believe in Jesus Christ, okay. who love the Lord, and who are faithful to the Scriptures according to our understanding. And that's what I would ask to be tested by or judged by. What does the Bible say? Deuteronomy 6.4 says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. We start from there as well as many other passages throughout the Bible and especially we see in the Old Testament the emphasis that God is absolutely one. The book of Isaiah, it says God is alone. He says I'm by myself, none like me, none beside me. Uh, no one is my equal. I will not give my glory to another. And so when we take these statements that God is one, very seriously, we say there cannot be any divisions or separations or distinctions of persons in the Godhead. Actually, the word persons is not in the Bible related mm -hmm. to God, and certainly the word three persons mm -hmm. or the word Trinity is never found. I would not say that we're divisive. We're trying our best to go back to Scripture. But those who would use foreign terms uh, have the, the, the uh, necessity of justifying why these terms are so important. Obviously, we use terms that are not found in the Bible, but when doing so, you must justify them. Why is this term essentially uh, biblical or consistent with the Scripture? When you cannot find any of the terms that define the Trinity in the Scripture, you have a high uh, bar of proof that you must meet. Uh, and I would say when the Bible says God is one, that means one personal being. When you go to heaven, you expect to see one visible manifestation of God. God has one center of consciousness, not three centers of consciousness. God has one divine will, not three wills. And so I would challenge Trinitarians, if they believe God is a plurality of persons, please define what they mean. Do they mean three bodies? Do they mean three centers of consciousness? Now, if they mean three manifestations, then perhaps it's just terminology. I would agree that God has manifested Himself as Father, Son, and Spirit. In that sense, uh, I would not call myself Jesus only. I do believe God's Spirit is omnipresent. When Jesus walked on earth, the Spirit of God could not be confined to a physical body. So we're not saying that um, outside of the physical body of Jesus there is no God. But we are saying all of God's character, personality, presence, power, and authority is fully revealed in Jesus Christ. And that would be the second point. Colossians 2.9 says, In Him, speaking of Jesus Christ, dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And so we would say in uh, contrast to trin Trinitarianism, every name and title of God can be properly applied to Jesus Christ. He is the revelation of the full undivided Godhead, not merely the incarnation of one of three persons, but the incarnation of the one God, the total God. He is the revelation of the Father. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Jesus. Jesus is the Son of God. To elaborate, when the Bible speaks of the term Father, it's speaking of relationship. God in a relationship with the human race. When the Bible speaks of the Son of God, it speaks of God as He is manifested in the flesh. When the Bible speaks of the Holy Spirit, it speaks of God in spiritual action in our lives. And of course, I can give you scripture for all of these, but I'm giving you the overview now. And so we're saying that God has revealed Himself as our Father. God has come in flesh as the Son of God. God reveals Himself in our lives as the Holy Spirit. But these three manifestations are necessary not because there is an inherent threeness in God, but these are necessary for the work of salvation in our lives. And the fullness of God's work of salvation is in Jesus Christ. In fact, there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved, according to Acts 4.12. Therefore, we can say that Jesus is the Son of God. 
meaning He is God's manifestation in flesh. The Son of God died. We mean by that His humanity died. He died according to the flesh. We do not mean that God ceased to exist. We could not imagine that there would be multiple persons and one of those persons ceased to exist or went unconscious or whatever the case may be. So when we say the Son died, we mean according to the flesh He died. But Jesus was more than flesh. He was also spirit. And in that sense, we can say Jesus is God. John chapter 20, verse 28, uh, Thomas, Thomas confessed the resurrected Christ, my Lord, and my, God. my Lord and my God. Now notice, he was speaking from a Jewish context, the Old Testament context of there's one Lord and one God. So Thomas was not confessing, you are a new Lord, a second Lord, a second God, or a second person of God. He was saying, the God I have learned to worship and love all of my life, you are the manifestation of God. And that's the basic oneness position that you cannot...